Hi, this is going to be block five of our Great Foundations block of the month. So this is a pattern that's going to be that is available to purchase and download from gourmetquilter.com. It's called Great Foundations Block of the Month, and it's foundation piece. So it's pieced onto paper, or there's other ways of doing it, but we're piecing this one onto paper at this stage. Well, that's what I'm showing you at any rate. So this is block five. We've already done the, the first four blocks. So we did this one was block one. So this is one of the versions of the settings of the quilt. This was block one, this was block two, this was block three, and this was block four. And now we're doing block five. So that's this block here. Um, so you can see that uh, they're all kind of starting to happen. This one's a little bit more involved than some of the others, where we've been doing either six or eight segments with the others. This one requires an, some extra, we are going to actually have 16 segments, so we have to have the smaller segments for in the centre area, because we can't, can't just sort of keep piecing them on because of the way the joins are. So we just work in little segments and then put the segments together. And then there's another, this segment, oops, where are we? Somewhere here. It will go here and this one's going to join on here so that you can see how it's all going to come together. So I'll, sh I'll run through how we're going to attach those segments. So in your pattern that you can download, so if you've already purchased it, you'll receive the pattern. You'll receive a link to download the next pattern. If you haven't, you can purchase it from gourmetquilter.com. So showing you a couple of suggestions for other colours and the block. And I've also suggested um, the sizes of fabric. Uh, that you might like to use. So we've just used half width um, strips this time, but just keep an eye on the sizing because they do vary just a little bit. Um, and I've just suggested that you might like to cut them into smaller segments um, for the piecing part, but uh, you may have your own system, that's fine. And then all the pattern pieces for all the segments will be there that you can use this pattern if you choose to do that. And it has got a little scale on it so that you can check the blocks are going to be 10 and a half inches finished. Oh, sorry, measuring 10 and a half inches so that there'll be a 10 inch finished block when they're set in to a quilt or whatever it is that you're going to make. So I'll show you how to do the little segments first. So there's eight of these and they've got two colours on each segment. So your pattern will tell you or suggest that you shouldn't label all your fabric so that they're colour one, two, three, etc. so that you know which one goes where. And on this one, it's calling for color three and color four. So my color three goes behind here. And I'm just going to, I've actually put my two pieces uh, together, right sides together, because I'm just going to, to join them basically down the center through the middle of this um, little wedge shape. And I'm just going to use this to help line them up. So I just want to be able to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance, allowance into that area because I'm going to sew along that solid line down the centre there. Um, and then we don't have to do any trimming. On this particular piece, we can set that up so that we won't have to trim that seam afterwards because we've just sewn it at the quarter of an inch. But then we need to trim the segment, obviously. So I'll go um, and stitch that and we'll get this little segment made. And as I said, there's eight of these, um, which actually are all the same. They are all numbered and with alphabets and numbers so that you can do them in order but these particular ones do happen to all be the same so sewing beyond the finished area so that you've got something to trim away and something to work with so i've already sewn that on there we're going to open that out and we're going to press that and then we can trim it to the right shape Just bring the iron over so I'm opening that out, and now we just need to trim off all that excess and the little corner markings. So we're trimming along the dotted line on the pattern, not the solid line. So I'm lining up my quarter inch line with the solid line so that I trim quarter of an inch away from that solid line along the dotted line. And this is kind of fun uh, th because these are quite um, straightforward these little segments you can actually get these ones ready and just chain piece them through because it's really very simple uh, you could possibly do them without the paper uh, although the paper will help give it stability particularly with this um, difficult shape that we're working with so I'm just trimming off these little corners as the pattern suggests with its little dotted lines 
and this just helps with some of the bulk and positioning at the corners and you don't have to do this but it's probably not a bad idea to do that and so there's our little segment already so you can see that this is going to come in here on our quilt quite nicely and so then the other segments there's four going this way and there's four the same sort of thing but in reverse um, to go around um, on the block here so this one actually is going to sit here like I said before and this is going to join on here like that so again same as we've been doing with the foundation piecing there's kind of nothing really different happening at the moment we just need to position things so our, our piece number one here is a background which is the BB if you're using two backgrounds as I have if you're only using one well it's going to be the same fabric whichever way you do it um, so I want to position this one and I'm going to, to lay this, my colour one, which is this one here because I didn't label them. Um, I'm going to lay this one behind my piece, ready, and I can line that up so that I get a nice seam allowance going on just past the sewing line that I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to be joining on piece number two, and that's this, happens to be this dark red for me. You might be doing some very exciting colours with yours. And just remember that when you're sewing these pieces, that when you've sewn them, that's going to flip over and you need to make sure it's covering the area that you're wanting covered with that fabric. So that's looking pretty good. And I'm just going to go to the sewing machine now. So starting right from the outside and extending beyond the block. Um, and I'll just stitch along there. Now I did forget to mention we are using a smaller stitch length than we regularly use and this helps perforate the paper more and also makes it stronger when we're going to tear away the paper. So, and then it's just continuing on in the same manner that we've been doing our foundation piecing, adding the neck shape so we can trim, press and add the neck shape sewing along the lines each time. So that because we've managed to do that, we don't really need to trim that seam, but I would press that as I go. I find that pressing makes a huge difference to the end result, particularly on some of these fiddly shapes, because we're going to be coming into some fairly tight points in this block here where we're trying to make everything meet up in the center. So just take a little bit of care when you're doing that. So we're ready now to position the next piece. So that's the next colour and again just making sure that you've got enough fabric extending beyond the area. I'm not sure if you can see that this is a bit darker. So that your seam allowance amount is there for the new piece that you're putting on but we'll need to trim away this other one when we've stitched that on. So I've stitched that next seam and just to, to remind you how we're doing this, we're going to pull this back and trim off this bit here. And because we've stitched a little bit into our seam allowance there, I just pull that piece of paper away and fold that down. Now you can either trim it this way by laying your ruler with the stitching line right on the quarter inch, sorry, on the stitching line, your quarter inch mark on the ruler, or I actually find it quite easy to do it from the back side. Just make sure nothing else is sticking out this side when you trim this off. So we've just folded this out of the way and I'm laying my quarter inch line along the fold, which is along the seam line and trimming off that extra bit that we don't need there. And then I can bring my iron over and press that in place. So, and then just continue on doing the rest of the shape and then we've got to trim that shape up and join the two little segments together to make one slightly larger segment. So I've finished doing that segment um, I've trimmed it all on the dotted line outside the, the solid line. I've trimmed away my little corner and now I'm going to join my two parts together to make a slightly larger segment. So it's really fairly straightforward. You're just going to match up that center line there and then do your seam allowance or stitching along the, the line there and then pressing that open. And then I'm going to suggest that you take out the paper in the seam allowance of this little area before you join this segment to the next segment. So 
So that's come together nicely. Our points are matching nicely in the middle there. And then I'm just going to press this seam open. When there's a lot of little fiddly seams and things meeting and joining, it's uh, often easier to have the seams pressed open. They tend to sit a little bit better. I know in other regular patchwork we often just press them to one side and you can with this but it's often a bit better this way. So I'm now going to just tear out the paper from just from the seam allowance. I like to leave my papers in for the time being um, and then I'll just show you the other little segments and how it all goes together into the block. I have found it just it's a little bit fiddly doing all this as you go, however, it does make things so much easier in the long term. So I might just quickly repress that now that I've messed all that up. Okay, so that's that's now two segments together. So we're we're going to have eight that look a little bit like this. We're going to have one some that go this way and some that go this way that are going to form a square when we join those two together. So similar as to what we've done in the past in that way with some of the other blocks. Um, so just <clears throat> when you when you do this, just measure, sorry, just make sure that your seams are meeting. I recommend starting from the centre to stitch out to the outside because we're having a lot of the seams meeting in the centre. Make sure that they're sitting nicely just before you start sewing and sew up there. I found it's easier to work from that end, having everything in the right place in the first place. So that's going to be a quarter, and then when you've got those joined together, they're going to look a little bit like that one. And then before you join these together, I would suggest that, again, you just take out the seam allowance, maybe just of this area near the point, and before you join up the two um, squares into the half of the block, because it just reduces some of the, the bulk as you're sewing it all together. And so then when you've done all that, You'll have one that looks like that, and the same thing. Remove the seam allowance area of the paper before you join those together. Now, when you join those together, this is a particularly bulky centre, so just be careful. It may be a good idea, in fact, when you're joining it to to start sewing from the centre and come out and then turn it over and start and sew the other half when you've got them right sides together, just to keep your centres together because of the bulk it may just want to move around a little bit. So that would be one way of keeping the points nice in the centre. So that's going to be block four and I've done one in another colourway here. I have been doing some other colours. I haven't got others done at this stage but I did manage to get this one done and looking kind of fun in the brighter colours. I love the Japanese tops but it's nice to see things in other colours too. So that's block five. Did I say block five before? Good. And uh, we'll uh, just keep going with our blocks. And it's a block of the month. The pattern's available to purchase and download on gourmetquarter.com. It's called Great Foundations. And that was block five. Thank you.